AJ Green and Calvin Johnson join a long list of injuries to top fantasy football players, but don't worry. We're going to help you find some other options to help you win your fantasy games this weekend. We've also got a bunch of questions from you guys that we're excited to answer, and we'll give you our busts and sleepers for week six of the NFL season. It's all on today's episode of the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. My name is Nick, also known as ClickWit, and I'm joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Dustin, or Project KSL. And today, guys, we've got a ton of questions from you guys, so that's what we're going to be focused on. But first, we need to talk a little bit about the injuries that have happened to a couple of the top wide receivers in the game. Now, we knew about Calvin Johnson. He was, he's was he been suffering from that whatever-the-hell ankle injury. I don't even know what it is at this point. A, a myriad of injuries, it seems like, to Calvin Johnson at this point. But it's now confirmed that he is going to miss at least this week, possibly a couple other weeks, But A.J. Green also injured his ankle earlier in practice this week. There have been various various reports on kind of what the severity of that injury is, but it sounds like he's going to miss this week's game. Dustin, which one of these injuries are you more worried about from a fantasy standpoint, and what should fantasy owners be doing right now that are in a panic? I mean, it's tough. I mean, the first two you think about, I guess, are, you know, Calvin and A.J. Green. They're the two big ones, but... Yeah. I mean, thankfully, at least usually it, receiving receiver is always the easiest position to pick up and fill. It is. So yeah. I, I guess you're you're somewhat lucky that at least these guys are receivers. But I'd probably have to say it's Calvin because it seems like AJ Green already has his toe. He's played with it and still played effectively with it. He just re-aggravated it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, Calvin's been nursing this ankle issue for weeks and weeks now, and they still haven't really shut him down. And he's finally getting shut down this week. But there's no indication how bad his high ankle sprain really is. Right. Yeah. And I mean, obviously we saw that he struggled for the past couple of weeks. We've been saying they just need to shut this guy down for a week or two and just let him get healthy. I mean, it sucks that we've, most of us have had him in our lineups if we've got him at this point for the past couple of weeks anyway, and we've just been getting killed by his, you know, one to two points every week. But, you know, obviously Calvin Johnson is the kind of guy that when he's on the field, you just, you almost have to have him in your lineup like we talked about. But I mean, at this point, it's. I think it's a good thing that he's going to be sitting out. Yeah. AJ Green, this one, like you said, it's it's an interesting one because, like, I think that the the thing that interests me most about it is that we really don't really have a great timetable of how long he's going to be out because. Uh, earlier in the week, I saw a bunch of reports that were that he was going to be out for extended periods of time, and like they were talking like three, four, five weeks potentially right. at first, and then it was like wait a second, he might play this week. Yeah. And it was and it was like, what? And then, so recently, yesterday, it actually was ruled that he is going to be out this week, but they, they're still saying that it's a day-to-day injury. Yeah, I mean, he so, was in a walking boot is a thing. So, I mean, mm-hmm. sometimes walking boots, it, sound, it sounds really bad, but it doesn't always mean it's a horrible injury every time you hear a walking boot. So, Very true. Yeah, Very it, true. it might be minor. It might be something more serious. I think right now, I think it's just something to monitor and assume it's week-to-week, mm-hmm. I guess, day-to-day. Yeah. Well, so let's say you're in this situation where you have, hopefully you don't have both A.J. Green and Calvin Johnson, although I will (laughs) say that my wife in one league does have both of them, and she's just, she's a little bit unhappy right now, let's just put it that way. But she's, what is she, I think four and one at this point in that league, so I mean, she can probably weather the storm for a week or two here and, and, uh, you know, try and pick up some other guys here, but... If you're in a situation where you need to replace one of these guys, what kind of guys are you looking at on the waiver wire? I mean, is there anybody on these actual Detroit Lions or the Cincinnati Bengals rosters who you're thinking about maybe looking at? I mean, mean, like a a guy like Mohamed Sanu, maybe? Does he take an upgrade or what? I I was like Sanu, Marvin Jones, if you're looking directly to Phil. But, I mean, again, we talked about how deep receiver usually is on the waivers. Right, right. James Jones is still out there in a ton of leagues. Guys like Brian Quick, James Jones, even like Jarris Wright. Now Teddy Bridgewater is coming back. I mean, you can get a guy in Philly and get you decent points he wasn't exactly. the upside of a calvin or an aj green but you can get a guy to spot start and fill in while these guys are nursing injuries exactly another guy that uh, we talked a little bit about on our previous podcast uh on the waiver wire selections ruben randall is getting targeted a ton for the giants yeah. right now 
And uh, I mean, not not necessarily that that's going to continue, but I mean, while it's good, you got to get in while the getting's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, Ruben Randall's a guy that I would be looking at. But yeah, like you mentioned, you mentioned some of the other guys. Brian Quick is, I think, a, a big one to target this week. Uh, he's going up he against the 49ers. He really should be, but he's not. Like, he's not even owned in most it's leagues ridiculous. at this point. So, um, I, I mean, I guess as as of ESPN's most recent report, he's owned in 54.1% of ESPN yeah, leagues. That's so silly. Yeah, if he's now, out there in the New York leagues, go pick him up. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, the, you kind of have to consider the fact that a lot of these leagues are ones that just get thrown away, essentially. Yep. These people draft, and then they don't ever look at their teams. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense that guys aren't going to be owned in every league. But at the same time, though, I mean, the guy's putting up big numbers. You know, he really is from a, from a fantasy standpoint and a bad offense. So, yeah, I, I like all of those guys that you mentioned. Um, a couple guys that are potential sleepers to, to pay close attention to. If you're looking for somebody that could have a decent game this week, Justin Hunter against Jacksonville, and I hate to really put any excitement on Tennessee, but this past week, I mean, he did catch a a long touchdown. We finally saw a spark from that offense. Uh, It took Charlie Whitehurst being in at quarterback to actually see them throw the ball efficiently. But Jake Walker's out this week again, too, so yeah, yeah. he'll have some some repetition at quarterback, so that's good. Right. Yeah, and I mean, it's it's more to me like an opportunity thing, like, okay, is is he going to be more likely to throw deep than Jake Locker is? Because I just... I, yeah, you I don't, don't see know. Jake Locker throw the ball deep that often, at least not effectively. Yeah, Jake Locker so, like Tim Tebow accuracy. That's the thing. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, not that Charlie Whitehurst is a renowned deep ball thrower, but probably anything no. would be better than Jake Locker as far as throwing just, with accuracy. So. Yeah, and I'm, I'm more talking like, is he just going to give the team the chance? You know, is he going to huck it up there? Is he going to have Rex Grossman, fuck it, I'm going deep? Yeah, you know? I guess it <laughs> like, comes it, down to how Wizard Hunt's going to call the game. but Right. I, but I, they're at I, home. Yeah, it, it, they have the best possible home. matchup they'll have yeah. all year. So, I mean, so, I mean in, in certain leagues, I mean, he might be somebody to look at. But, yeah, I mean, we've talked about a bunch of the guys here. You, you don't want to panic at this point. Don't go out there and trade AJ Green and Calvin Johnson for garbage right now just because they're injured. You have to try and weather the storm as much as you can. If you can still get a good deal for those I guys, say, I don't have I, a problem with it. But I made a trade, and I ended up trading away Calvin Johnson. And I ended, I, have, I had to package him with Gio Bernard, but I was, I'm mm-hmm. super deep at running back in that league. you got to keep in mind. Yep. I ended up getting back to Marius Thomas and Justin Forsett. So I ended yeah. up feeling pretty good about that deal. Just because I still think I love Demarius Thomas. I'm probably going to be in a homer anyways. He's coming off his best game. He's finally healthy. No idea how long Calvin's out for. I love Gio yeah. Bernard, but he was expendable to me in that situation. Yeah. I I would never make that trade personally. I know. Just because I, I, know, I, never I would either. But in that, in that league, I have, I, I want to say I have Jamal Charles, Le'Veon Bell, and like Marshawn Lynch. I see the thing that the thing that I would be doing in that situation is trying to see if I could just do almost straight up Gio Bernard for Demarius Thomas because yeah. like I I mean it, the problem is is that you're in a league where people are from the Denver or the Colorado area so you kind of have that homer factor and that makes it tough to trade for a guy like Demarius Thomas especially after he's coming after him off of a monster game but you know if we're redrafting right now Gio Bernard and Demarius Thomas are probably going right around one another yeah they're so it's kind of first. I mean yeah the thing is yeah. it's just it, obviously, Demarius Thomas is valued higher, like you said, and also right. I, I valued I valued Giovanni, Giovanni Bernard a lot lower because just of my personal running back depth. Yeah. Is the thing, no, so. exactly, and it's all about circumstance. But yeah. um, you know that that's just my personal opinion on the matter. I would be looking to try and keep Calvin in that case because then once Calvin comes back, you have Demarius Thomas, Calvin Johnson. Are you freaking kidding me? Like that's just ridiculous. But yeah. But anyway, though, I mean, we've 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 uh, spent enough time talking about the two wide receiver situation. I, like I said, though, I, I just I don't want you guys to panic if you're in this situation. Do not be the guy who goes out there and trades Calvin Johnson for I, you know some garbage player. Don't I will do say that I think it is worse if you can just shop around Calvin and throw out some offers for something. You know, one for one. If yeah. someone's willing to give you a guy like you know Antonio Brown, Jordy Nelson, you know guys that were oh, obviously yeah. all taken lower than him. Yeah, I mean yeah. Demarius, any you know Roddy White, any of those type or not Roddy White, Julio Jones. Uh, yeah. Any of those type of players, just throw out the offer because some person's going to be, you know, see the name Calvin Johnson and freak out and not even care that he's hurt. Let me let me ask you this. Would you trade right now what you know about Calvin Johnson for the remainder of the year? Would you okay. trade him away for Emmanuel Sanders? Because oh, I, I think know, that's I, I about the range thought, that I'm at. I thought you were going to say that too. and, and <laughs> I, I, I mean, hate to hit the Sanders Denver thing, but it's, yeah. It's tough. Like... It, it's tough because Emmanuel Sanders is going to start catching TDs. He has zero on the year, yeah. and he's still just been an insane wide receiver. So <laughs> right. you assume right. that's going to pick up. And not knowing the severity of Calvin's injury right now in a one-for-one trade in PPR, I'm probably doing it. 
Yeah, I think I am too. I think that's like right on the verge of the player that I would probably trade for. I probably wouldn't trade Calvin away for a Steve Smith right now, no. but it's Maybe it's right Cobb. on that. Oh, uh, Randall Cobb again is, is I think I value Randall Cobb and Emmanuel Sanders right around one another. So I think it would kind of depend on my situation if I have a good depth at wide receiver where I think I, I have somebody to start for the next week or two here while Calvin gets healthy, yeah. then maybe I'm not going to. But if I'm in a desperate situation where I need somebody to start or if you know if I'm two and three right now and I can't afford another couple losses here in the right. next couple of weeks, I'm probably doing it. Yeah, I'm probably trading away Calvin for Randall Cobb. So, I mean, it hurts, but you, you have to analyze the situation that you're in. You can't sit and take losses because Calvin's on your bench or, or you know, on, on the injury report and on your bench. But at the same time, though, you can't be the guy who trades him away for absolute garbage. Yeah, you got to make sure you're getting back something significant for him. I mean, it's all about situation, who you also have on your team. If you could ex- afford to expend a running back or a quarterback, whatever the case may be, see what's out there because we don't know how bad this injury is going to be. Yep, and I don't exactly. think anyone's going to be surprised if he's out five weeks, and that's a huge chunk of the season. You know, right. he just cannot get this ankle right. So, right, right. Absolutely. So out there. Let's talk a little bit more then about uh, the wide receiver position because we're going to start getting into some questions here. And the first question that we have comes from Ryan Amedi, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, but he wants to know, and we actually had a couple people ask specifically this, what do I do with Brandon Marshall right now? Oh, man. You know, every indication is that he actually has – his injury is better. I've been hearing that by from a lot of people. I've been seeing it that, you know, his, his injury is better that he's been hampered with since, like, I want to say the 49ers game. Yeah. So you assume he's, he's Jay Cutler's favorite target. The production is going to come. Yep. Like, I, I do really think that that will get turned around. And, you know, it. I, I, at this point, I'd probably say hold on to him and hang tight. Because if your value out there is going to be significantly lower than, or the, what you'll receive will be significantly lower than what he's worth. Right, exactly. I mean, I think we both have it in mind that Brandon Marshall is still going to be a borderline top five wide receiver for the rest of the year. Right? I mean, we're I think we're pretty much in agreement with that, that, that Marshall is going to be an absolute beast. There really isn't a whole lot to be yeah, worried about for him. There's so. still not a whole lot of players I'd really trade for him. Something interesting, yeah. if you own Calvin Johnson, I might offer who has Brandon Marshall and see if you can get him. That's not I, a bad idea, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that might be a good person to target. Yeah, because Brandon Marshall owners are probably pissed off. They've been starting him. He hasn't been doing a whole lot for him. But right, I, I can't stress enough how confident I am that he'll get that turned around. Yeah, I have. I'm me not too. worried in any way about Brandon Marshall for the rest of the season. Yep, me either. So I'm, I'm definitely on board with uh, keeping Brandon Marshall, not trading him away while yeah. his value is low. We never want to do that in fantasy. So, all right. Uh, next question comes from Sal Kicks Button. He's been asking questions quite a bit, so I'm, I'm hoping that we're helping you out with our, with your questions that you asked. But uh, this week, he wants to know who do you think I can get better points from this week? Des Bryant at Seattle or Kelvin Benjamin at Cincinnati? Now, normally this one would be a no-brainer. You play Des Bryant, right. but. He's up against that Seattle secondary. Yeah. What do you I, think? Well, you know, the, the Seattle thing is going to get all the attention that it rightfully it should. Is. But again, yep. it, it, Richard Sherman only plays the left. So you, mm-hmm. the Cowboys are going to have a whole week to play or to game plan around getting Des Bryant in space. He's probably going to face Byron Maxwell more than Richard Sherman, which both. If well they're smart. Him. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have to think he'll if play they're on smart. The right, you know. Yep. So I, I, I really do think that they're going to find ways to get Des Bryant the ball. They know that he's their. Best shot in the passing game by a mile, especially if Jamarco Murray gets stifled, which very well could happen versus Seattle. Yeah, I I think that I, he's still your stud. You play him pretty much regardless of matchup. This is going to put it to the test. It's not like Kelvin Benjamin is playing some scrub defense. He's playing the Bengals. Right. He's going to get on Leon Hall, who's a sick corner too. Yep. I, I will say that I think I would definitely start Dez this week. Yep, me too. It's a, it's a matter of stud versus guy that we don't know a whole lot about yet. I mean, we both still like Kelvin Benjamin going forward, but not over Dez. No. Uh, one thing that I want to point out as well, Seattle, uh, for all that they're known for being an amazing secondary, and they definitely are, the, one of the big things, though, I think people are overlooking is the fact that they really haven't done that great at stopping the pass so far this year. Now, granted, they went against Aaron Rodgers, Phillip Rivers, and Peyton Manning, Yeah. but, but even still, though, They've allowed an average amount of points. They're they're the 16th ranked defense against opposing wide receivers in terms of points per game this year. Now, while they have only allowed three touchdowns, they've allowed at least 12 catches to wide receivers in every single game this year. They allowed 21 catches and 240 yards to yeah, I mean, wide that's, receivers. That's the thing so. about the Seattle defense is it, the best way to attack them is a nickel and dime them. 
Yep. And to just hope you don't get deep. So those games where you're going to catch a lot of passes. I mean, it's not going to surprise me at all if Des Bryant catches, you know, nine passes for 70 yards. Exactly. It won't surprise yep. me at all. So it's just. In your PPR formats, that's totally fine, too. Yeah, it's awesome. 16-point game, even yeah, if he doesn't get into the end zone. For so. Seattle, that's phenomenal, yeah. So yeah. I, I, I do think that because of the way that offense they're playing in Seattle this year, no one's taking deep shots versus them with Earl Thomas over the top. It's Right. I, I do think in PPR, absolutely, this matchup. But even in standard, I'm still going Dez. Yep, me too. All right, so now we have a couple of questions that are involving a, a new San Diego running back, and that is Brandon Oliver. So first of all, Jason Kirk wants to know, do I drop Bishop Sankey for Brandon Oliver? And the rest of his, uh, I guess it doesn't matter, the rest of the question, Bishop Sankey for Brandon Oliver. Do we drop Bishop Sankey for Brandon Oliver? Oh, man, that's a close one. You know, I, I, I still personally think that Brandon Oliver's role is going to be extremely limited once Ryan Matthews comes back, which is going to be back in about a week. Agreed. Yep. So I, I, knowing that and just personally what I think about that situation, I, I don't think that role is going to be sustainable for those for the next for past the next like two weeks. Yep. People are saying he's going to immediately have the Danny Woodhead role. I don't buy that. I don't think no. he's going to be the new He's not Danny Woodhead. Yeah, I don't buy that at all. So I, I think he'll be a scat back to, to Ryan Matthews unless Ryan Matthews gets hurt again. But Bishop Sankey at some point is going to start getting all that team's carries. Exactly. So long-term upside, I think you'd have to hang on to Bishop Sankey versus short-term results. I'd hang on to Bishop Sankey. Yeah, I mean, the, the, what it really comes down to is, again, your individual situation. If you need somebody for this week, you have to have somebody to start for this week. I like Brandon Oliver better than yeah, Bishop absolutely. Sankey. Yeah, absolutely. Even though... Yeah. Even though Sankey's up against Jacksonville. Uh, he's still so, splitting I mean, a shitload of carries there, though. Exactly. Because Ken Wizenhun's being ignorant, but... Right. He's ignorant, blanket. Yeah. <laughs> no, but seriously, though, I, I think that Bishop Sankey um, is definitely going to be the guy going forward, at, like Dustin said, at some point. So let's get on that bandwagon while we can. If you don't need him for this week, go ahead and keep Bishop Sankey on your roster over Brandon Oliver. And uh, just try and weather the storm as much as you can. So uh, next, though, we're going to talk about Bishop's or uh, uh, Brandon Oliver again here, and that is going to be um, the person wants to know: Do I start Brandon Oliver or Andre Williams this week? Oh man, I'm going Andre Williams. Are you? I know it's. I I mean I know people might might think that I'm crazy, but I'm pretty big on Andre Williams right now at this point. I don't see a whole lot to not like about him. Yeah, I think I mean, he's been very, very, very productive with the opportunities he has, and Philadelphia's defense is garbage. I think I'd go Andre Williams, too. San Diego re-signed Ronnie Brown. So, I mean, then Brandon Oliver's not going to see the entire workload. You know, that'll just yeah, never happen. So. Absolutely. And I think that as much as Tom Coughlin's been running this year, this year, last week, I think they had over 30 rushing attempts last week yeah. in that game. So, Tom Coughlin really likes to run the ball. He really likes to run the ball around the goal line. He's notorious for it. So I think for this week against a bad Philadelphia defense, I'd probably roll Andre Williams because I think it's more of a known role that he'll have. Brandon Oliver, Agreed. you assume he's going to get all the carries, but they re-signed Ronnie Brown. They're probably going to split that carries, carries up more than people think. I'd yeah. go Andre Williams too. All right. Uh, next question comes from Colton's GT. And he says, I have, uh, he ha I have a trade offer. Do I trade away DeMarco Murray? And I'm assuming he's saying Peyton Manning. But he says, all Manning. he says is Manning. <laughs> yeah. Make sure that you let us know. There's two quarterbacks named Manning, so I'm going to assume One's it's Peyton. a lot Peyton. better than the other one. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. They're not equal here. Uh, DeMarco Murray and Peyton Manning, and he receives Marshawn Lynch, CJ2K, which CJ, like, 0K probably this year, Andrew Luck, and Larry Fitzgerald. Okay. Well, I am not doing that. I say you pretty much remove Chris Johnson and, and Larry Fitzgerald because they've been absolutely trash this year. They don't, right. they don't even matter. So you're looking at... Who was it? Andrew Luck and who? Marshawn? Andrew Luck yeah. and Lynch for Peyton Manning. And Peyton who? Manning and DeMarco Murray. And Murray, yeah. No, you're, you're basically giving up. I mean, I, I get that DeMarco Murray has the injury concerns, but yeah. no, nah, you, you don't give that up to get a guy like, I mean, right now, Marshawn Lynch is playing amazing and he's catching more passes than he ever has and he's still behind DeMarco Murray. Right. So I mean, the the big thing to me here is that when are you going to be comfortable starting Chris Johnson? Yeah, Probably never. not They'll at fuck, all. Fuck either of those guys. They don't even matter in this trade. I'm looking at essentially a two for two and some guys just trying to get those thrown in. Larry they, Fitzgerald could still be relevant once Carson Palmer comes back. Yeah, he might. But, I mean, he had stretches. Like, he's definitely yeah. better than Chris Johnson in this deal. Right, right. So, I mean, I think I think that I can see the temptation here because I, I think – if we're comparing Marshawn Lynch to DeMarco Murray, I like DeMarco Murray better, but it's marginal. And Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is our number one quarterback. The problem is that Peyton Manning's on his own tier. 
Yeah, and so, he has bye, too, and he's still very yeah. close to Andrew Luck is the thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's – I, I want to say Andrew Luck going into the Thursday night game had 14 TDs as an extra game. Peyton has 12, but he's already had his bye. Yeah. So – and prior to the bye, Peyton Manning was the number one quarterback. Peyton Manning's the number one quarterback. It's not close. There's no one close to him. Andrew Luck's a very distant second. Yeah. And I think after that, it's a, it's a whole other argument altogether. But – the thing is, is it's, it's how sure are you as DeMarco Murray stayed healthy? Because if, if you are really thinking, man, he's going to get hurt soon, it's going to happen, then you know you might be enticed to do the steal because you're still getting an elite quarterback and you're getting an elite running back. But, yeah. you know, if, if you're one of those people that just, you know, you don't let injuries dictate how you play, then you then you stick with what you got because Murray and Peyton are better than Lynch and Andrew Luck. You play to win the game. Okay? <laughs> you play to win the game. And we're playing to win the game here. We're going to try and keep the number one running back and the number one quarterback on our rosters. That's all there is to it, as far as I'm concerned. Right now, I think you're redrafting. I think both Peyton Manning and DeMarco Murray are top five overall picks. Yeah. I'm not I'd, trading them I'd away. probably say so. And I'd say I'd say that so. Lynch would be – he'd probably be top five, too, if I'm yeah. redrafting the way it is right yeah. now, the way he's Maybe. playing catching passes. But Yeah, yeah. Uh, Andrew Luck would probably be, at best, a late one. So just yeah. on value alone, I think that you're, you know, you're you're giving up the two best players in the trade. Yep, exactly. All right. So next question comes from Logan Johnson on YouTube, and he asks, "Should I consider t- dropping Toby Gerhart? I have Matt Asiata, Jarek McKinnon, Brandon Oliver, and Jeremy Hill. Or do you think he'll get better with the development of Blake Bortles? Now, I'm assuming here. I have to assume that you have other options than this." Because well. <laughs> I don't think you went into the season unless you had unless and your Adrian. running backs were yeah if your running backs were Adrian Peterson and Toby Gerhardt I prayers but uh, <laughs> I mean I had like, Ryan Matthews too I mean it's a rough situation if those are your only guys but at the same time though yeah I think you're dropping Toby Gerhardt at this point I don't see any reason to think that he's going to yeah, turn it around that's, that's the thing I never thought in a million years you'd go to a new team get you know be a starting running back and somehow have worse fantasy value than he did as Adrian Peterson's handcuff but he has yeah. so it's. He's just been completely terrible. I think he's averaging like 2.5 yards a carry. I don't see that change anytime soon because they're not. They, eventually, at some point, they're just going to be like, "This guy is absolutely horseshit," and anyone can be better than him. He's like money ball territory. Yeah. So it, you know, it, Storm Johnson is going to get the looks this week. He played at Bortles at Central Florida. I know a lot of draft people really, really like Storm Johnson. Yeah. So if I own Toby Gerhardt, probably right now I'm just dropping him and riding him out and picking up Storm Johnson this week and just seeing what happens. If you have to have a, a Jacksonville running back, I think he's the one that I want going forward, as sick yeah, as that sounds. Exactly. And and, and yeah. the thing is, is, if he goes out there and, you know, he has, you know, a 100-yard game and a TD or something, he probably has that role for the foreseeable future. Right. So Even if he has a 60-yard game, he's going to be better than anything they've had so far. Yeah, that's so, the thing. Like, so, yeah, drop him. He doesn't have any yeah. value. Yeah, I'm I'm not interested in Toby Gerhardt. Unfortunately, it's it's one of the biggest misses in fantasy football this year. Thankfully, if you paid attention to our fantasy uh, predictions before the season started, yeah, we, neither of us were on board with Toby Gerhardt yeah, as being a superstar ADP. player. Yeah, his ADP so, was so out of control. Yeah, people were thinking. I mean, he's going what like the fifth round of some drafts. Higher than that in some leagues. I mean, I mean yeah, especially his ADP was so out of it's, control. It's absolutely insane because people were just assuming, well, he's going to be the only guy that touches the ball. That's great, but when you're in an offense that scores six points a game, that yeah, doesn't, doesn't mean matter. anything. Yeah, you can have so, 30 carries. You're averaging two yards a carry. It doesn't fucking matter. Yeah, so I'm I'm not on board with Toby Gerhardt at all going forward, period. He's just awful. All right, next question uh, comes from, let's see here. Um Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is one. We don't normally address this position because screw it, but for the hell of it, we're going to right now. Do I start the Denver Broncos defense against the Jets or the New England Patriots defense against the Bills? And this is from Beast Gone Gamer on uh, on YouTube. I'm going to go with Broncos. Yeah. It's, Pass I, rush I, is just there. Yeah, I, I definitely think it's Denver, too. I think that they have yeah. a better matchup. And I, also I don't think, think either that... of them is particularly scary. For no, matchups, not at all, but, but if I had yeah. to pick an offense that I'd you know, of the two, the, the the better one of the two, it's definitely Buffalo. Right. They have a lot more explosion just out of that offense. You know, they still have Sammy. Right. They still have, you know, C.J. Spiller, you know. Fred Jackson, yeah. Yeah, Fred. I mean, they still have, you know, yeah. Robert Woods. They have a lot more competent weapons than the Jets do. And yeah. they have a better quarterback. So, yep. yeah, it's, you're, you're playing the Broncos. Sadly, they have a better quarterback with Kyle Orton. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Next question comes from, and this is our guy uh, who who we've answered a couple questions from, and I always just try and I, I do my best on his name, Rahul Path- Pathapuram. Okay. All right, he asks, should I trade Jordan Cameron and Russell Wilson with Terrence Williams 
for Jimmy Graham, Brian Quick, and Alfred Morris. And to me, this one is an absolute no-brainer. Yes, you are trying to get the side that has Jimmy Graham, Brian Quick, and Alfred Morris. Yeah. Um, I mean, if we're if we're comparing them directly position by position, okay. So Jimmy Graham to Jordan Cameron. Yeah, absolute upgrade. destruction yeah, in favor of, of Jimmy Graham. Yeah. Uh, Brian Quick to Terrence Williams, I think it's closer than people would want to Probably admit. Pretty close to a wash. Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, I, I would probably I'd slightly. Have Williams, yeah, it's, it's probably slightly take T. Willie, but yeah, it, yeah, it's very close. And then you ask uh, Alfred Morris to Russell Wilson, and of course, it depends on your need there. If we're redrafting right now, though, Alfred Morris is getting drafted above Russell Wilson. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, if you have another competent quarterback, like I know a lot of people that drafted Russell Wilson also paired him with a guy, you know, like a Tony Romo or Jay Cutler or something. Right. And if you have a guy like that, then yeah, absolutely, you do this trade. You don't right. even think about it. Yep, agreed. Uh, very easy trade, I think, in this case. So let's go ahead and pull the trigger on that, baby. Uh, let's see here. Another trade question comes from Colton's GT, and he asks, I, I give up Matt Ryan and Justin Forsett. I receive Aaron Rodgers and CJ Spiller. And this is standard scoring if you're interested. So, standard? Yep. So, I mean, basically, let's compare the positions here. Aaron Rodgers to Matt Ryan. Taking Rodgers, correct? Yeah. I mean, I yeah, I, yeah it, it, it's definitely Aaron Rodgers still, but I don't think it's – a crazy gap or anything though. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got Justin Forsett and CJ Spiller. Yeah. See, the thing is, if this was PPR, I might make a bigger claim. I might make a bigger claim for Justin Forsett. But the fact that it is standard, Aaron Rodgers is still better. I think the other two are, you know, whatever, CJ Spiller and Justin Forsett. If you're mm-hmm. getting Aaron Rodgers, I'd want the side getting Aaron Rodgers. Yep. Yep. Agreed. All right. So uh, next question comes from Dat Dude NC, and he wants to know: Do I play Victor Cruz this week or Sammy Watkins? Um, Victor Cruz. He plays. He, I mean, Cruz. he's playing Philadelphia. You you know he's you assume he'll probably face Kerry Williams, who just gets toasted routinely. Their offense is clicking right now. Sammy Watkins' quarterback is still going to be um, Kyle Orton, and and in all likelihood, I think they said that he's probably going to match up with Revis for the majority of the game. And well, I think over, Revis is overrated as all hell. He's still a good corner, and he'll probably give Sammy Watkins a lot of trouble. So yeah. you go with Victor Cruz. Yep, you go with Victor Cruz. Cruz has been pretty hot lately, so um, in his most recent game, not so hot. But a couple of good games in a row there. Next question comes from Real Deal 87 and he wants to know, this is a pretty big trade. So uh, what he would be giving up is Drew Brees, Calvin Johnson, and Ahmad Bradshaw. Okay. And this is the one, you know, we're talking about trading on Calvin right now. So, all right, Drew Brees, Calvin, and Al- Ahmad Bradshaw for Andrew Luck, Eddie Lacy, and Jeremy Macklin. So, I think we need to, again, analyze position by position here. Okay. Yeah. Number one, Drew Brees versus Andrew Luck. This is going to sound crazy. We're both going to take Andrew Luck here, and I know that's baffling for people when they're listening close. to this. Andrew Luck is a freaking stud and that's all there is to it this dude is the number two quarterback in fantasy going forward bottom line end of story second position calvin johnson versus jeremy macklin i think this is an interesting one i think jeremy macklin's right on that verge of like what we talked about before emmanuel he's Sanders. one receiver one yeah he's one yeah. receiver one for the rest of the year probably so yeah i'd, I'd still rather have calvin but yeah. i think people are it's it's closer than people think with jeremy macklin he's been really right. really good this year yep then the third portion of the trade is Ahmad Bradshaw for Eddie Lacy. And I know you hate Eddie Lacy, but you're still on board with Eddie Lacy overall, Ahmad Bradshaw, right? If I knew Ahmad Bradshaw was going to say healthy for all 16, I'd take Ahmad Bradshaw. Stop I'm, it! I would. I really would. <laughs> but. All right. Th- Fair th- enough. I mean, he already has five receiving TDs through the, this season. I think the record is like nine. You know yeah, I mean? that's so not like, sustainable. I'm sorry. Well, if he finishes with above seven, I'd be surprised. You think? You mean you only tell me he catches two TDs for us? I think he catches. Five. I think he catches. I think the over under on a Mod Bradshaw catching passes coming into this year, touchdown passes, would have probably been two. So I, I think if I put it on two for the remainder of the year, I think I'm pretty safe with that. I could be wrong. But, I, I mean, you have to keep in mind, too, a lot of these touchdowns, they're not coming from a distance. It's not like he's getting bombs to him or anything. It's like, oh, they're at the two-yard line. It's a little yeah, dink I'll pass. Take I'll take but, yeah, him. No, you take the points, obviously. But, I mean, is it sustainable? Nah, I don't well, know. I don't know. He already has five. I don't know. I, I like Ahmad Bradshaw more than you, but that's okay. I, I like Ahmad Bradshaw, but I don't like him anywhere near as much as Eddie Lacy. He has injury, not even close. Yeah, the, the injury concerns are what always hurts Ahmad Bradshaw. He's had many, many, many serious injuries. So, bottom line here is, yes, we're doing this trade to take Andrew Luck, Eddie Lacy, and Jeremy Macklin. Yes, yep. absolutely. All right, uh, next question comes from Jason Kirk, and he says, I got Jimmy Graham on a bye this week, so I got to roll with one of these two, Eric Ebron or Jordan Reed. And uh, Jordan Reed is right Jordan now— Is Jordan even going to play? That's a good question. Jordan Reed, as far as I understand right now, is still questionable. Um, so, I'm not like— ugh. 
I, I'm not really like that excited about him. And not to mention, uh, Niles Paul is supposed to play this week. Yeah, they might so, ease him back in. I mean, that's that's a bad situation to be in. Yeah, you might want to uh, see if there's a guy like Jared Cook or something like that on your waivers and display him this week. So I mean, yeah. I, I guess I, of the two, you pick Ebron because I think he's at least going to see probably more snaps. You'd imagine, right? But that's a really bad situation to be in. The one positive that I'm going to give to Eric Ebron in this case is that Calvin Johnson won't be on the field. So they're going to need to spread the ball out a little bit more. I mean, like, if I have to like give a positive to him at all. So I'm going to go slightly in the favor of Ebron as well. But yeah. if Jordan Reed plays, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Jordan Reed outscores him. Yeah. Not a great situation for your tight end this week. So, you know, good luck with it. Next question comes from Sal Kicks Butt again. And he wants to know, is Percy Harvin a good buy low player right now? I'm going to say no. Really? I'll be honest with you. I don't really think he's that great of a good uh, of a buy low. And the reason for it is because I, I know that Seattle is is a great team as far as like getting the best out of their players. But Russell Wilson is not ever going to be a guy who keys in on one wide receiver, as far as I can tell anyway. Well, he's never He hasn't done it so far at any point in his career. Now, granted, he hasn't had Percy Harvin, really. But even when Harvin's been on the field, he's getting minimal targets. Yeah, I, I think I'd get him because, I mean, in all likelihood, there's a very realistic chance he could have had an easy three Hades this last week. Sure, I, I think fair. that he still has established himself as the number one threat in the passing game, and Russell Wilson yeah. looked a lot no, better absolutely. this year. And absolutely. also, just as far as role they've been using, my, they've still been giving him snaps out of the backfield, end around and stuff. I think they're going to get the ball in his hands. So I, I like guess... Percy Harvin for everything except, again, the injury concerns. It's how confident yeah. are you in him to stay healthy. I think the big thing to me with Percy Harvin isn't necessarily even like, um, like his. It isn't necessarily like his role in the offense. It's it's a combination of like, okay. So first of all, how how much are they gonna do as far as like passing for touchdowns this year? I like, mean, a decent amount. I mean, Russell Wilson's always throwing amount, quite a bit, not quite a few, but a decent amount of TDs every year, and he hasn't had Percy Harvin. Yeah, I I, I, I do think he'll I get have, it. I, I don't think the TDs will be that like worrisome to me. It's just the injuries. But I, I the think injuries that, are a huge concern, and the other thing too is you have to keep in mind too how low is low. What do yeah, you have to give thing. up to get that's Percy that's Harvin? It really depends what you have to give up. And if I'm looking to buy right. him low, if the, if the guy that owns Percy Harvin is talking shit to you every day, like oh, man, I'm, I fucking hate Percy Harvin. I'm sick of having Percy Harvin in my lineup. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, send him an offer and see what right. you get for him. Yeah, I mean, okay. Let me ask you this: Eddie Royal or Percy Harvin for the remainder of the year? Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Roddy White or Percy Harvin for the remainder of the year? Percy Harvin, higher upside. I'm going Roddy White. Upside's higher at Percy. Mike, uh, Marcus Wheaton. Oh, Percy Harvin. Percy Harvin. All right. No so we're kind of getting an idea here. Uh, Dustin's a little higher on Percy Harvin than I am, but, um, I mean, it, it all depends on what you have to give up for the guy. I mean, that's that's what, that's what at the end of the day, that's always the name of the game for buy low and sell high, frankly. Yeah. So, you know, go ahead and send something out there to the guy because if you can get him for something you're comfortable with, yeah, go ahead and get Percy Harvin. But if you have to give up, you know, even value for what you drafted Percy Harvin at, I'm not doing it. I'm not drafting Percy Harvin right now where his ADP was at the beginning of the year. It's probably a little if bit that lower, but I, I think so. also for me, it's just mostly the injury concerns with him. Right. And thank, frankly, he stayed healthy so far, so good for him. But all right, last question from YouTube comes from Kendall Wright, or, or comes from, uh, excuse me, Sean Valentine. He wants to know, do I play Kendall Wright or Eddie Royal this week? Um, man. Kendall Wright against the Jacksonville Jaguars, so that's a pretty money matchup. Yeah, and Eddie Royal against of Oakland. They're both yeah, on both the of road, them in very they? good matchups. I know Kendall Wright, I guess, is at home. You know, yeah. I, I'm, I'm probably going Eddie Royal just because his yeah. quarterback is Charlie Whitehurst. Yep. Kendall Wright's is. So, you know, you got to go with Phillip Rivers and Eddie Royal. Eddie Agreed. Royal's been real good this year so far. He has a really good matchup with Oakland, who's just getting yep. obliterated on defense. Yep. Yeah, I, I think it's probably Eddie Royal this week. Yep, completely agreed. I'm going to go with Eddie Royal this week. All right, so we've got three more questions. These are all from Twitter. Thank you, guys. If you guys uh, don't know, make sure that you send your questions to us at TV or at Project KSL on Twitter, or, of course, you can leave them in the comment section below. We'll try to get to as many of them as we can each week. Um, this one comes from E. Sean PN on, on Twitter, and he asks, I'm a big fan of the Fantasy Swagger podcast. Thank you, buddy. We do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Is Golden Tate a reliable start this week at wide receiver two? Yeah, absolutely. I say absolutely. Yeah, I think no he's question. a borderline wide receiver one. Yeah, no, he's. I think he's top five right now in receiving yards in the league right now. Yeah. And with Calvin, you know, officially not going to play this week too. I think he's doubtful. So, 
yeah, that, yeah, I don't see any reason why he wouldn't be, in all likelihood, the most targeted person in that offense, especially with Reggie Bush probably not playing. Joyke Bell's going to see the start there. So, yep. yeah, I, I definitely say he's definitely a wide receiver, too, this week. All right, and then the next question comes from Exile Sky on Twitter, and he wants to know, who do I start in a standard scoring league? And I'm assuming that he's going to need a couple of these guys just based on the, the, the names on this list. But uh, AJ Green, who's out, obviously, out, so no. Uh, Golden Tate, Randall Cobb, Julio Jones, and Cordero Patterson. So right off the bat, Cordero Patterson's out, right? Yeah, We're not you're starting Cordero Patterson. Patterson. Yeah, so it comes down uh, to what? Randall Cobb, who's the other one? Randall Cobb, Golden Tate, and Julio Jones. Julio Jones is an every week must start right now. Yeah, Julio Jones goes in, so then it comes down to Golden Tate or uh, Randall Cobb. And, I mean, Golden I Tate is closer. playing. I mean, Randall Cobb is playing Miami, and Miami has actually been really good at defending TD passes this year. And who does, who does uh, Detroit play this week? Minnesota. Yeah, so I'm probably going for Golden Tate over Randall Cobb for this week. So probably Golden Tate and Julio yeah. Jones if i got to pick two of the group. I'm going to go Golden Tate as well. Uh, like you said, for touchdowns, it's it's actually very important in a standard scoring league that you get the touchdowns. Yeah. And I think Golden Tate is a more likely opportunity to get touchdowns this week, like you mentioned. So uh, if this was a PPR, I think you could maybe make the case for Randall Cobb. I'd still go Golden but, Tate, but yeah, it'd be closer. Yeah, I think it's a little bit closer. All right, and then uh, last question from Ben Anderson NFL on Twitter, and he wants to know, do I start Larry Donnell or Jordan Reed? And again, uh, unfortunately, oh, we Donnell. don't know what the situation is with Jordan Reed, but yeah, we're going to go well, with Donnell here. Yeah, Larry Donnell, yeah. There's, regardless, it doesn't even matter if Jordan Reed's playing. I'm playing Larry Donnell. He's been a monster for Eli this week, minus that one game. Yeah, And it, I, I read some things, too, that says they specifically targeted to take away Donnell in the red zone. Right. So you yep. assume that's not going to happen every single week, and Eli yeah. has clearly shown that he's he wants to get him the ball in the red zone. Yep. So yeah, definitely Agreed. Donnell. So we like we like Donnell this week. All right. So let's move on to the final segment of the week, where we're going to give you guys our buy or our uh, our bust of the week and our sleeper of the week. And uh, let's start off with Dustin. Let me know your bust of the week this week. Uh, you know, I looked at this. I had a couple names. I ended up going down to um, Pierre Garcon who is playing Arizona oh, yeah. this week. He got yeah. annihilated last week versus um, Seattle. Mm -hmm. He didn't do anything versus Richard Sherman this week. He's going to face either Antonio Cromartie or Patrick Peterson with Kirk Cousins still as quarterback. It's probably going to be a tough matchup. They're in Arizona. Yeah. I, I don't like him this week at all. He's still owned 100% of leagues. He still started in the vast majority of leagues. Right. If I have other options, I'm not playing Pierre Garcon this week at all. Agreed. I think uh, we talked about a few guys in there that I think you can uh, potentially start above him. Um, you know, your middle-level wide receivers in a lot of these cases right now. Pierre Garçon has had three really terrible games and two great games. Yep. It's very Tough odd that he has been so up and down because last year he was so consistent. But, you know, it's, an, it's a new year. It's a new offense, new yeah. and they've got Deshaun Jackson now. So, I mean, this is going to happen from time to time with guys, and, and unfortunately, Pierre Garçon of this year is not Pierre Garçon of last year. All right, my bust of the week is Matt Asiata of the Minnesota Vikings. I know you guys are thinking, like, is he really an every week starter? Well, I mean, the thing is right now with all these injuries at running back, he is an every week starter. In almost every single league, there's very few leagues right now where Matt Asiata is on people's bench, but I think he should be. Matt Asiata currently ranked as ESPN's number 16 ranked running back for the week, which I think is very, yeah, very great. high. Um, that's that's a mid-level RB2, high-level RB2 in some leagues. And uh, Detroit, best run defense in the league this year. Yeah. Excellent, excellent front seven. Um, they've done an amazing job shutting down opposing running backs. The Vikings might be out there trying to pass the ball a little bit more because they want to see what they have in Teddy Bridgewater, but Asiata has not rushed the ball for more than 80 yards in any game, and his only rushing touchdown came in the game when he had three against Atlanta. Yeah, he's so, a big-time plotter. He's a really low yard yeah. per carry, too. I and mean, yeah, versus so. a matchup like Detroit, he's probably not wise to start. I, I think that there's a, an opportunity that McKinnon gets used a little bit more in this one as well. So, uh, you know, to me, I'm going to go and sit him on my bench for a variety of guys. I mean, there's there's a ton of guys down there. Um, a lot of your PPR league guys, you were going to want to start them above Ahmad Asiata this week because I don't think that he cracks 50 yards rushing, and I doubt he gets into the end zone. Yeah, the so only saving grace with him would be if he scores like a one-yard one, line, right. a one yard TD or something, which and could happen, but it's hard It could, to yeah, and even against great defenses, I mean, even if – because if he gets 15 yards and a touchdown, people are going to be messaging me on here and saying, you're so stupid, he got seven points. But that's – I mean, it is what it is. You, you have to go based off the information that you have, and, and this is just not a good matchup, and he's not a great running back. Yep. So I'm going to bench him this week. My sleeper of the week is on the other uh, – another running back, and that is actually Noshan Moreno. I know. Yep. 
The guy's been out for multiple weeks now with an elbow injury, was supposed to miss two more games, but he's now listed as probable heading into this Sunday's game against Green Bay. Defense, uh, defensively, Green Bay has been absolutely atrocious. They can't stop anybody. And if he's healthy enough to play, I think that uh, Noshan Moreno is going to step right back into that starting role. I think he's going to get the vast majority of the carries over Lamar Miller. Thankfully, this isn't like an, an ankle injury. It's not a knee injury. It's an elbow injury, which can be painful, but I don't really think it's going to slow him down. Yeah, exactly. So I, I do like Noshan Moreno a lot this week. I think if he plays on Sunday, he should be in your lineup over a guy like a Matt Asiata, for example. Yeah, a lot of people are saying that, um, you know, that Miami views him as the workhorse and Lamar Miller as kind of the scat back. And it's going to be put to the test this week. Because Lamar Miller, I mean, he did as good as anyone could have hoped in his opportunity when Noshan was out. He was really good. Yeah. So yep. we'll see how, how quickly they want to ease him back into the role. But, yeah, I think he probably will be the guy there. So he's a good sleeper this week. Who's your sleeper for the week? Uh, a guy I've been pretty high on to you. I've been talking about him a lot. <laughs> is Justin Forsett. Hey, we heard you talk about him a little bit more. Tell me more about Justin Forsett. Right now, PPR, he's owned in like 50% of leagues, and he's the number five overall running back. So What's, what's not to love? Yeah, it really. It, you know, <laughs> he should be owned in every single league, especially PPR. I think that he has yeah. a role in that Baltimore offense that's going to sustain throughout the year. He has a really good matchup this week in Tampa Bay. He's yes. seen the most snaps. He's seen the most you know overall touches of the ball for the running back position for the Ravens right now. Mm-hmm. I think that'll sustain. I, I think that they trust him the most, and especially, like I, we talked about it in one of the other ones, you know, his role in the passing game I think is absolutely secure. I think this week versus Tampa Bay, he could easily house the TD. Right now, I think he's tied for the league lead with DeMarco Murray as far as uh, yards or rushes over 10 yards. I don't see why that would drop off this week versus Tampa. I think he's a really, really, really good play in PPR this week. Yep, I do too. I think um, Justin Forsett, especially this week, is a great option. I do have questions about what his value is going forward just because I, I look at that. Any any running back situation where there's three guys that touch the ball, I don't love. But I do think of the three, Justin Forsett's probably the guy who, in, especially in a PPR league, is most likely to get the most touches and points. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I like him the best of the, the three, I guess, going forward, but I'm I'm not as sold on this situation as as uh, Dustin is. I want to see what's going to happen this week. I want to see if he actually is the guy out there for 60% of the snaps or if he's out there for 40% of the snaps, which is better than the other two, but still not spectacular. Right. So... Anyways, guys, that is going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you press that like button below. And also be sure to press the subscribe button so you can be updated when we put out our next episode. If you guys have any questions about your lineup for this weekend's games or if you're thinking about making a trade or if you just have a general fantasy football question, make sure that you leave that in the comment section below or send us a tweet at either Project KSL or at TV. Also, make sure that you guys send at Project KSL a follow on Twitter. He would appreciate it. Good luck in your games this weekend. Be sure to check back with us next week for our recap of this weekend's games here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Podcast. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.